Hey. Okay, hi everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Super excited to do, uh, love to paint gnomes with you guys. Here's my little printout that I did for my reference so that I don't get too carried away because you know me. I always get carried away. And uh, we had a little bit of a hold up here um, in the Carlson's household. So I'm just pulling up all my stuff. But it's just gonna take one minute, okay? All right, welcome, welcome. Welcome Anne, welcome Catherine. Guys, say hello, tell me where you're from. I am going to do this so that you can see me running around because that's what I do, right? Because that's the fun part. Hi. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess I'll turn it on when I switch. I'll just switch it. So this is the paper that I use uh, when I paint uh, with you guys. This is acrylic paper, uh, ground backer, and I really prefer it because then I don't end up with a gazillion um, canvases all over the place. So this is what I'm going to use. It's 11 by 14. And my gnomes are not up to size at all. See, they're like much smaller. So I'm going to do my own sketch of this. All right. Welcome, Debbie. How, uh, welcome, Colin. Welcome, Gina. So happy you could join me today. I'm gonna just stuff this back onto the shelf and uh, let's see. So to work, uh, to do my sketch, I'm going to need a pencil and a white eraser. Never use those awful red things, okay? They, they tear your paper. You don't wanna do, use this, use, get a white eraser. And what else are we talking about, right? Um, uh, for gnomes, we're gonna need paint of any colors you like. And I think I will just stick to a flat brush like this, and maybe like a small flat like that. And the detail. Detail brush, I really like round brushes if I can locate it. This will work. I just had it out. Oh, here it is. Okay, and the detail brush. I really like to use my um, you know, disposable paper plates for everything. Colin and Carla, welcome. Welcome, Cindy. All right. Okay, I'm switching because I just wanted to Turn this on so that you can see that I'm a real person. I'm actually a real person. <laughs> I really like see uh, the artist when I uh, take a class like on YouTube or like a recording. I really like to see who that is. So, <laughs> okay, enough with that. Uh, let's do desk view so that I can have my lights on so that everything's good. I'm not going to need that. All right, um, uh, gnomes, you can find this in the group. So um, if you go ahead and join Paint with Luba on Facebook, that's where that tracer is. Sadly, while when I'm painting, I cannot add you to the group. The good news is that I'm going to create my sketch right here so you can just follow step by step and, and do that with me. All right. Okay. Um, so again, the group is called Paint, Paint with Luba on Facebook. It's in guides. Um, let me see. I see that Catherine. So Catherine says that uh, her husband's making one of those fancy dancy canvas holders for her paintings to be able to flip through them. Ooh, that is super fancy. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's start with the sketch then. Okay. So as we can see, the gnomes are super 
tall, right? They're very long and very tall. So if I fold it in half, it would probably even work better on some sort of a, like a wood plank. Like, you know, people make um, porch leaners, something like that. This would work great. But here's what I'm going to do. And you don't need to do this, but it will help you see what I'm talking about. Okay. So I'm going to fold this in half to find the middle. And then in half again. And this way we'll break it into four parts. Okay. And I'm going to open it. So I'm going to start with the uh, Christmas gnome, I guess, over here, and the fall gnome on the side. I don't know. Uh, you know what? Let me know in the comments. Tell me if you're painting two gnomes or just one gnome, what everybody's doing. That would be so helpful to see because I think I will just show you one and you guys can take the technique and method, right? and uh, make it happen. So um, here, green marker is the best so that you can see what I'm doing. I hope it works. So here's my line, half line. Here's my quarter line and my quarter line. Okay, see this? So here's his face and his face is covered with this uh, stocking hat right here. So that's just nose. The nose is right pretty much right in the middle of this quarter, right? And so this is where the nose is going to go. And then we'll just add a hat all the way up. And then we'll add the beard and his little robe, uh, the shoes and the hands. Yeah? Christmas, Christmas, and copied the two and made one of her own. Okay, so let's just do this and uh, you guys can figure out what else you want to do with this. So first of all, I'm trying to decide if I want to cut this or if I just want to do the normal. I think I will just do this. Now uh, bear with me because I've never done this with this paper. It is super stiff. That's probably a bad idea. I usually paint to size, right? But I think this works. Just a half of it. Okay, let's cut it. Just so that it's not confusing and it's easier to follow proportions. Okay. Here we go. And I'm not going to fold this in half. I'll just eyeball it. All right. So eyeballing probably this is about my half, right? Okay. So I have a half and then a quarter. Yeah, that's probably a little bit too high, but oh, well, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't, doesn't matter. You can do this whichever way. All right. Donna, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me live. It's a lot of fun to have you guys join me live. All right, so here we go. Here's his nose, right? In the second quarter, a little bit below the middle. So I'm going to mark the middle here. And the nose goes right here in this area and it's a little bit like it's not straight right it's a little bit um crooked <laughs> tilted kind of off to the side a little bit so all you need to do is to draw an oval and this is you this way you can create any any gnome like whatever you like following these steps you can always draw a gnome okay and then his hat it's also a little bit crooked, right? So we're just going to draw lines from here to there. Okay. And then I'm going all the way up here. So if you look at his hat, it's like letter S, right? S, S curve, curve, and goes back down to the line. So I'm just going to start somewhere here, right here, and 
I'm going to create a curve and then go back and then bring it back into here. So my hat is going to be sh going to be uh, shaped differently than this hat and I'm okay with that. If I don't like this curve, you know, I can always go back and kind of make it less of a curve, right? But it really, is it really that important? Okay. And then the other side of the head, going back up and close it in. There we go. That's the hat for the ornament. So there's a little hook right here. So we'll bring it a little bit lower. And then there is this um, hardware piece, right, that holds the ornament and the circle. If you're not comfortable drawing a freehand circle, find something to trace. There's plenty of things, I'm sure, in any household, a coffee cup, a uh, your paint, a cap from your paint, uh, jars, lids, cans. There's so many, so many different things that... Um, can be used to help with the circle. I am lucky enough to have this wonderful stencil so that I do not need to go and erase and go and erase. So I can like really pick the size that I like. And I really like this one. This is perfect. So I start with the circle and then I add, it's almost like a rectangle. It's a little bit softer. So there's our sides, there is the ribs for the piece and there is the hook. Can forget that, right? Okay. Doing good so far, right? Okay. And so now we're going into his face and the, the beard, the beard first, it's right here. So for the beard, this is how I like to kind of line things up. I go to the middle of the nose and I draw a curvy line. See, that's kind of the middle of the, it kind of shows me where to bring that spot. And you see this spot is right in the middle of the first quarter that we uh, did. So this is going to be the middle of that first quarter. This is the middle of his nose. And I'm just going to lightly draw, drop the line right here. And then I'm just going to add the beard. So I'm going down, off to the side, and down again. Okay. And from the other side, there, we have a beard. Next step, his uh, little boots that are somewhere here. So I'm just going to draw two lines and add, you know what, they remind me of like marshmallows a little bit. So there's his feet. And uh, the robe, you want to add a curvy line a little bit, like a smiley face. You know, not too much of a curve, but you want it to you want it to be curvy. And then curve into here and into here. And finally, we can add his little hands. And uh, funny enough, his hands here look like just just the same shape as his nose. You can put them on different levels. It looks uh like more in the movement or you can put them on the same level so whatever works for you is good okay so here we are and now we're gonna go going to uh look at his hat and add the design so you see how these lines are kind of wavy right that's what we want because that will add volume to the hat. So you're just going to add one line and maybe another and then go up again and add a couple more. And then as you go up higher, your wave is going to change into just a curvy line. And then the trick here 
is to make sure that this side over here is shorter than this side over here because the hat is flopped, right? So make sure that these lines are not parallel, but kind of open up a little bit. And then you can add another, maybe over here, if you want it to go that tiny, but you really do not have to. If you need a reminder that like you will have some highlights on your um, ornament, you can always add some highlights to your ornament, okay? I am not going to add any designs in just yet because I'm going to paint this first. Also, um, a good thing to do, especially for beginners, is to trace all your main lines with a Sharpie. And I'm going to do that because, not because I need them personally, right? But because I want you to see how this is done. So starting with the nose and then adding those, the hat, see how I'm curving the hat line. I want you to know that there is nothing wrong at all whatsoever with creating your sketch and with um, using a Sharpie to outline things. See, I messed up on the circle, but I don't care. Okay, there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Always do what works for you. Here we go, here's one hand, here's the other hand. And I'm kind of speeding up a little bit because I do not want to hold you here forever. But, okay, and I would like, I want to trace these lines to just keep me honest because when I paint and I get carried away, like I will not follow the design. <laughs> I literally get carried away, okay? And so if you did this with a Sharpie, you can just grab your eraser and remove all the pencil lines to make your life easier and to just make it easier to paint. So if you notice that like my, you probably notice, you probably see that like all my water's shaking here. That's okay. I'm really trying to stabilize my table. It used to be a regular artist desk and I am six foot tall. So it didn't really work for me because it was super low. Like I could not get comfortable. So I went to our local, um, um, home improvement store and I got legs, table legs, about one foot tall each, I think. And I just put them in. I just attached them instead of those little um, things they give you to like level your, your table. And so I now can use it as a stand desk, right? So I'm standing up right now, or I can use my tall chair to, uh, to do this, but it's not very stable. Like it will shake if I apply a whole lot of pressure with my eraser. The whole table goes like this. <laughs> so I have to be careful. Okay, so what colors are you guys using? Did you think of anything? Did you have a plan? Do you want to use something like completely insane? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All right, so this is good. I'm going to just uh, shake this off into the trash can. And look at that. We have a perfect little gnome. And uh, the best part is that everybody here now can design their own. You can just make your own. So that is great okay what i like to do is i like to attach my painting to some sturdy surface like that i don't like to just paint on paper okay so i just tape around the edges super fast and uh what i have here is blick brand it's artist tape 
it uh, to me it's worth its weight in gold because I use it for so so many things and I am just taping just a little bit off this is just gonna take a little bit and I'm gonna be super careful on the top because my head is super high I kind of went a little bit crazy there that's okay hello Linda okay tell me in the comments tell me in the comments what colors you're using and uh, if you're ready to paint if your sketch is done and you're ready to go and I know that usually when I teach so like if it's not your first time you know that I always start with already pre-drawn one right but I thought this one would be so much fun and honestly my day was a little bit you know what no my day was abundant on bless in blessings so many good things happen happened but they all happened in one day and so it kind of kept me busy all right here we go here we go here we go okay what Okay, so I believe that the reference had uh, the gnome, like he is wearing a green hat and a red coat, red mittens, and like golden shoes, and he has the red ornament. So that's kind of a thing. Joy, that's amazing. I just love this. She says, it's me and hubby doing together at home date night. That's fantastic. Love it. And probably one that red, green, and purple brood. Okay. So it's all good. Whatever you choose, it's all good. So I usually use my regular set of paints. So we're going to, I'm going to use some white, you know, for sure. I have some magenta, I don't know. I will make up my mind in just a minute. As for my colors, I have some primary red, which really looks more like cadmium red, but it's still primary red. I have primary yellow. Don't know, we'll see what happens. I have lemon yellow. So I'm just pulling out my standard set of eight, what I always use. My sky blue or cerulean blue. Oh, hello. Let's try again. There we go. That's a lot of paint. And phthalo blue. Okay. my chair in so that I can perch up. Oh, Helen and Virginia, you made it. Very nice, very nice. Colin says, same here. Okay. Okay. So, let's see. What are some interesting, unexpected combinations? So if you're just going to going to do the, um, if you're thinking about just following the reference with the green hat, you can always do that. So for that, I would, um, I would really start painting the whole hat white and then dry it off and then create my, excuse me, create my old, all my designs and then paint green. Okay, and then do the black outline, the black background later. But let's decide what we're going to do here. Let's do a 
Okay. <laughs> I have an idea. I'm going, I want to go for turquoise. Is that nuts? I'm going to give him a turquoise hat. Or should I just stick to classics? Let's stick to classics just to avoid problems, right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be easier <laughs> to just stick to classics? Okay, y'all, I'm going, I'm looking for my little, here it is, for my palette knife that I like to use to mix paint. So why I use this brush is because it allows me to mix paint and uh, um, uh, it doesn't get stuck in your brush, all the paint, okay? Okay. So let's do lemon yellow here. And I'm going to go for a different sh green, uh, shade of green now. So I'm just going to add a decent amount of sky blue to my lemon yellow. I have been playing with different colors. I've been playing snowman left and right and uh, I really like unexpected colors for Christmas. Oh, I like that. What do you think? That's a nice green. Very unexpected, right? <laughs> we just, I'm just going to do that because we can. Okay, so I'm just going to paint the hat. Start with painting the hat. And, you know, once it goes up, if I look at it and I don't like it, what's the worst thing that can happen? I don't like it, right? Well, I can always wait for it, let it dry, and then mix up a different shade and fix it. I am not worrying about going over lines, and I'm sure you see that, that I'm making it messy, messy, because all outside is going to be black anyway. It will take care of it, so I don't need to worry about it. But I do not want any green on my ornament, because my ornament is going to be a different color. I haven't decided which one yet, probably sky blue. And obviously, you do not want this green on his beard. Oh, are you kidding me? Hold on, guys. We need to block the guest who was not invited. There we go. Okay. All right. So meanwhile, give me the likes. Where's my favorite? Yes, here. You got the drill. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. I teach one painting a week, roughly. Well, usually. Except for it's going to get a lot more funner here in December. Because we're going to work on our advent calendar art journal and so there will be a piece of art painted or you know created every single day i hope <laughs> i hope that will stick to the schedule because you know sometimes things happen okay all right so this is going to need a second coat so i am just giving it a second coat and I did notice and so you might have noticed it as well that paint doesn't dry as fast on canvas as it does on paper and so for me I may be going much faster than you can okay so for you to go as fast you might need to use a blow dryer and just dry it okay before the second coat, because you do not want to pile it up. It's not going to work well if you just pile the paint up. You want a nice, flat, nice, flat coat. 
coat of paint. There we are. And while we're at this, I will, I'm taking a little bit of primary red right on the bottom, like on the tip of my brush right here, okay? And I'm going, I'm mixing it up with this green. So I will take it down the paper towel. That's a little bit too much. I'm gonna take this green. So I wanna make, I want to make a little bit darker green. See, so it's now like a shade darker and I will apply it to the left side. I will just do a layer of the left side of his hat like this. Okay, you see the difference here? Wipe it off on a paper towel. And then going from the outside in, I am blending this into the hat, turning my brush as I go, just blend it in. So this does, it's creating a sh creating shading for the hat. So the hat looks a little bit cool, okay? Wipe off the brush, go back to your original green or whatever color you're using for the hat. And now you're going to drag paint from the other side of the hat and into that shading. Just like that. See, and it all kind of sort of blends in, but you still have like a darker, little bit of a darker side and a lighter side on the hat. See this? It's really hard to see because it's super shiny. Shiny, shiny. Okay. I'm going to clean up my brush. Okay, get the excess water out. I haven't done my regular setup. So, I usually sandwich my paper towels underneath my rinsing water. And it's, this is super heavy vase. So that's why it works, because it won't flip easily. And this way, I don't have to hold my paper towels in my hand while I'm doing that, while I'm painting. All right. So, I decided that my ornament here is going to be blue and I think the sky blue is a good choice especially because I used that sky blue to make the green yes so some white some sky blue together Mix, 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 make a nice, nice pale blue. And you can do this with any color you're using, whatever you chose. Fill up your brush and just paint inside of the ornament. Again, I am not too concerned about going over the line a little bit because all of that is going to become black. I just want to give it a good, decent coat of light blue. And I'm using the same brush. I'm not even refilling it because it has a whole lot of paint. And I'm using it on its side like this, not flat, on the side like this okay and so i'm just going to go into his beard and add some color just going like this flick on the side okay just add some color 
and then go back and kind of get the line by his nose, under the hat, like all of this, okay? Careful to not go over the lines here because there is a coat that we probably would want a different color. Here we go. Try and avoid blending in those little marks that you just made, but it can be too hard right now because we, because we have to put color on the beard. But you can see probably that there's areas you can see, right? Some of them are more pronounced than the others, okay? Okay. Yeah, that's better. My video stopped. Oh, no. I still have my video here. shows to me that I'm live. Did it stop for everybody? Okay, if you're still seeing me or hearing me, let me know. Because this is weird. This is very strange. Let me know. Hold on. Hold on. If you're watching replay, which I always... Okay, Diane says she can hear me. Okay, good here, good there. Okay, so it's not me. It's probably on, on their end. All right. Not that I'm happy that there is something wrong on that end, but um, I'm glad it's not on my end. Sorry about that. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So for the coat, you can go something contrast, something, you know, super bright and unexpected as always, or you can go matchy matchy. So I was thinking maybe go matchy matchy and make his coat the same green as his hat. But then what's fun in that? So I'm just going to paint his coat bright red because I can have fun with it. And then he can have, um, I'll give him uh, green mittens. Yeah, I'm ready to grab my small brush here. Small brush. Okay, if you haven't found, I see that somebody couldn't find the uh, tracer. Did you guys go into the group? It's in guides. And if you're on your phone, it's kind of tricky to find guides anymore because, yeah, Facebook hides everything. So guides on your phone will be in the top uh, left corner. There's like three lines, three dash lines. And if you click on that, it will take you, it will take you directly to guides. Let me know if this is helpful. If you're watching this and you have requested to join the group, <laughs> but your request hasn't been approved, I will get to it. I am so sorry. Just as I said, this day was abundant with good stuff. Super grateful for all the good stuff, right? Oh, 
Okay, so good to know you guys can see and hear because, yeah, this is the worst. This is the worst. When you're like in the middle, when you're in the middle of a session and all of a sudden internet dies and nobody knows what to do, it's the worst. And I used to say this every time I had the class live and then I stopped saying this and I think maybe I should do that like and repeat that so if something happens and we lose connections and I cannot reconnect most likely I won't be able to reconnect if something happened what I do is I finish the recording I make a recording and I just post it I publish it on on YouTube and then if you would go back and just like give me time to work through my internet and things right but then if you go back you usually you should be able to find it and watch your replay okay does that make sense does that sound good all right So here we go, here we go. I am applying a second coat of red because my first coat of red looks a little bit choppy, you know? Doesn't look great. I want a little bit better coat of red. And sometimes, depending on what red you use, the pigment, it can be really hard. It can be hard to create that bright red color. And so um, what I've seen people do, and I did that also, would be paint a coat, a layer of red with a little bit of white in it just kind of offset the transparency and then paint it and then paint it again second coat sometimes it takes three coats so it all depends Gina says I'm back yay I'm glad you're back uh clicked on the uh -huh. says clicked on the files icon oh no 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 not files not files guides guides go find guides there's more than 60 guides in there and each guide has a replay and tracers and all of that i don't put stuff in files i haven't put stuff in files in a long time because it's, there's no way to keep it organized Okay, very good, very good. So um, back to my brush over here. And I forgot to put black on my, on my plate. Nobody yelled at me. <laughs> you guys, you're not paying attention. I said eight colors and I put just seven up and nobody yelled at me. Of course, uh, you can always argue that black is not a color right and also people say that white is not the color but hey it goes in the in the bottle so it's kind of a color okay so here's my next thing i am loading my wide brush the flat with white and i'm grabbing a tiny bit of phthalo blue on the side of it you see just a little bit and I am going to use the brush again on its side like this not flat on its side and I'm using the white side first so that I will get some little specks see like this I get like specks of that phthalo blue okay and now I can flip it and go again and just add 
like a different color. I do not want this whole beard painting painted flat. Uh oh. Okay. Just like that. Just a different set. There you go. Now wipe the brush off on the paper towel. More white goes on that same brush. And now we're going to grab a tiny, tiny, tiny speck of black, like a really tiny one. See? Very, very small. Okay. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm painting on the side. I'm using my brush on the side and uh, the black up. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of white on here first before black even touches it. And then I'm just going around and gently adding texture to Mr. Gnome's beard. And now it has texture. Okay, clean this. Go directly. Uh, so I want my uh, mama mama ornament directly into sky blue with that same large brush. And now I'm adding sky blue. To the ornament Whoop. I want it a little bit brighter there we go wipe this off and put some phthalo blue on the corner of your brush again same way I don't know if it shows it's too dark it's right here on the corner, just like we did with black just now. And uh, it goes on the left side of the ornament right here. Okay. So just like we did shading on the hat on the left side, we're doing shading on the ornament on the left side. And uh, you can work this in just like that. Just one side, that's all we need. All right. Oh, I'm gonna clean my brush. So this brush can rest for a little bit. Let's mix paint for his nose. And that is usually the hardest thing to do, but we can do this. The only thing I'm missing, though, is my lemon yellow because I've used it up. But this is something that I really like to have for skin tone. So I'm just going to grab a little bit. I'm going to try and grab a little bit. Like, I love these bottles, but... Oh, yeah. Love these bottles. But sometimes they're kind of iffy to, to get the paint out of them. Ah, of course. I was trying to get a little bit and I ended up with a puddle. Oh well. Anybody else has this problem? <laughs> right? Okay, let's do the nose. So for nose, I like to do like flesh color whatever flesh you choose, but I really like to do light apricot or like peach, more like peach, a little bit on the pink side, but just a little bit, okay? And so the way I do this is by mixing some white and then I use a tiny, like literally super tiny speck of magenta and a tiny speck of yellow, lemon yellow, and then I mix. And uh, you can say probably that that's not what we want, right? So we will add, that's too yellow. So I'm gonna add a little bit more magenta to this. Yep, getting there, 
maybe some more magenta. You kind of have to, it's like a touch and go. Or you can just make it pink, you know? You can just make, mix some magenta with some white or red with some white and just go with that. What the fun is in that, right? <laughs> this is a lot more fun. Mix your color. Fancy. I kind of like this color. I want it maybe a little bit more on the pink side. There we go. Okay. And here goes his nose. And of course, if you do not want him to wear mittens, this is the same color that you would paint his hands. Okay, and sometimes it's fun because it's cold and everybody's nose turns a little bit red when it's cold. So I pick up a tiny, tiny piece of magenta here and I go back to his nose and I just kind of blend it in from the center out. And it kind of gives it this look that no he doesn't normally have this nose color but it's cold <laughs> okay let's paint his booties your choice whatever your heart desires i am just going to put a good amount of um, primary yellow on his booties just for the fun of it. Could have made them black, but that's boring. And please don't take offense when I say that. If you decided to paint it black, it doesn't mean that yours is boring, okay? Mine is. Okay, just fun, 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 fun. Okay, wipe off the brush. And uh, as I said, I was going to do matchy matchy. So he is getting green mittens. How crazy is that? That's pretty crazy. a little bit of gray so I'm gonna wipe this off touch of black with this white here lighter gray and that lighter gray and I really like that it picked up a little bit of green from the brush it has a little tint I like that and that goes right here the hardware that's holding the ornament right okay and so next i'm painting the designs and for those i will be using my round brush detail brush Add some water to it. I mean, not to the brush, to white paint. <laughs> some water. Make sure it's clean. And I will start at the top of the head. So here we go. There was a white line. Another line. And then... I can see that we can put dots here, right? And dots can be super hard, but they really do not have to be. 
So what I do is I have a pencil with uh, an eraser that haven't been used and I use it for like larger dots. Or if you have a bigger brush, you can do the other, use the other side. Even the Sharpie has that. You can even use the Sharpie. So I'm just going to use the Sharpie because I can. But uh, if you want your dots to be the same size, you need to refill, refill, re I can never say that word right. doesn't feel right in my mouth. Refill. Okay, so there's one dot. I get a refill. And another dot. And that's it. That was so easy, right? Use what you have. Look around and use, use resources that you have. Okay, then we're going to... We're painting this line over here. And sometimes, most times for white, you will have to go again. You will have to go back and like add on top of it, okay? And another. So here you can just fill in whatever designs you want, whatever your heart desires, or you can follow the reference. I'm kind of sort of following the reference. I'm using the same elements, but not in the same order. Um, uh, tree, we can do that. The tree is just a triangle. So that's going to be here. Just a triangle with, with the trunk. And you want to make sure that you follow the curve of your hat with this. And a line right here. Okay, and uh, looks like there's a bunch of dots in between the two lines. So I'm painting this other line so that I fit everything in there. And uh, sometimes it's easier to put your dots in starting with the center one. This way it's easier to space them out. So there's one. Another, another, here, and here. And what do I see? I see three more trees. Okay, so in here, I will plan. So I will follow the curve of the hat. So my first tree will be somewhere here. I want to make sure that I have room. My second tree will be right in here. And the third tree is coming here. And now I will paint little triangles around it. I'm kind of following that curve of the hat. And the little trunk, just doing the same thing. One more time. Here. And this one. Okay. 
Another line. And what do we have here? They have, uh, uh, let's do the design line. So, okay, I will add this line right here. Yeah. Okay, so we're going into that design. Right here. There. Yeah. And then the bottom of his hat, this line here, I am going to make it white. And then around his nose. And this line over here. This line needs to be white. I think. Maybe not. But I want it white. And then we get dots on there. So, in the brush, back to my Sharpie. Let's try and add some dots. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. All right. I don't know if it's like nobody's talking to me right now because everybody's so busy working or I am not seeing your comments. So I don't know what's, what's happening, right? Okay. Back to back to the um, round brush because we are not done. I cleaned it up, but it's too early to clean up. So I would like to add some more white to these elements so that they are really standing out. So I'm just applying the second coat to everything I just did on his hat. And I am doing these elements here inside the lines first. Because then you can add the lines on kind of top of them. So if there is some overlapping happening, right? Or if you got out of lines a little bit, it's no big deal. You can cut that, you can cover that up. There we go, a little bit of white. A little bit of this. And another line. So yes, I am just adding some more white. If you like it to have, like if you painted and it's just one coat, and you don't need, you didn't need to add another coat of white on top of this. Please, <laughs> thank you guys. And is busy, Colin's working, Catherine busy concentrating. Yes, okay. I'm just like making sure that my system's working. Um, so if you do have the white that just did it in one go, please let me know what brand you're using because I've tried a few and I still haven't found one that would just, go on <laughs> and stay white like this. And of course you can use Posca pens. Yes, you can. But I'm talking white paint. Like if you have white acrylics that does it, let me know. I wanna give it a try. Okay. I even used today for something else that I painted this morning, I used um, uh, acrylic ink, white acrylic ink, and even that didn't have a very good coverage. So, 
All right, so second coat is done. I'm adding a highlight to his nose right on top. Whoop, like an upside down smile. Highlight to his hands. Again, upside down smiles. Whoop, whoop, not too curvy, but needs to be there. To his booties. These are a little bit more curvy to follow the curve of the boot. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> okay, and uh, now we're going back to the ornament. I don't remember where my highlights were, but I can add them, right? So it would make sense to have highlights on the side opposite from the shading, yeah? So we'll just add here and here. With Posca pants, would it probably need a second go? Diane, it depends. It depends on um, how big the pen is. And also it depends on uh, how old it <laughs> is. So I have, uh, let me just pull this out. I did um, last year, no, a couple of years back. I did, I painted windows for people with like snowflakes and stuff. And so I have this, it's gigantic. So if I open it, you see that's the size of it. It's huge, right? And that one, it just went on opaque, one layer didn't need anything. But then the smaller ones, sometimes they need a second go. It also depends on, uh, I don't know, just, it's like, it's one of those things I'm not going to tell you to use it because it's a try and go for, for many people, okay? So um, back to my round brush and just on the tip of it, I'm picking up a little bit of black and I'm going to paint the, you know, the little, those little ribs that they get for that have uh, for this little piece of hardware. It's really funny because I have been trying to remember to figure out what this piece is called. Okay, let me bring this up to the camera a little bit so you can see. There you go. Just like that. So easy. So easy. And I will grab a touch of white on that same brush. And I will add a little bit of highlight, like a white highlight on that hook, because we're going to paint the background black. And I want to still be able to see that little hook that holds the piece. And now with the same round brush, some white paint, just do the flicks on Gnome's beard. It's up to you how many, but I would not overload it. Okay, just do a few. Flick, flick, and just let it be. Okay. So what are we doing now? Thank you, Diane. Um, Let's outline this in black. And the way I like to do this to make my life easier, I take a smaller brush, like a quite small, and uh, fill it up with black. And then I just do like it's called cutting in. I cut in into the lines just around it. And I allow myself just enough space because if I do this with a large brush, it may be a little bit overwhelming, you know, a little bit too hard to do, especially in like little spaces like over here. So I would just go around like this. And I started doing this in black, but then I thought it would be a lot of fun to maybe outline this in black, but then to finish the background mix phthalo blue and black so that it's not just flat black yeah so i'm gonna go going down this way you can turn your canvas either way you can turn it fix it 
put it the way that works for your hand. go yeah you see like areas like this it's it can be hard to get into so you can just use a smaller brush get into all the nooks and crannies and crevices right and then and then come back with another Gina says use gesso huh Really? How did I not think about that? You know what? Just for the sake of experiment, we're going to finish this. We will finish this and I will pull out my white gesso and we'll try to uh, put a white line on something here on the same painting to see See if it works. I'm just super curious. Oh my goodness. Did you see what I just, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking white and I just did that. I dipped my black brush into the white. <laughs> oh, okay. But then, but then I have to ask myself if they came up with gesso that is white and covers things, why can't they come up with white that does the same thing? Right? It's a conspiracy. They want us to buy more, more stuff. I hope you're laughing right now. <laughs> Okay, and it may seem tedious, right? All of this outlining, but it is so worth it. You just do this and we can move on to the next step. And uh, I'm getting to the point where my ornament is next to the hat. And so that's why I'm grabbing my round detail, round detail brush. Just to make sure that I'm exactly where I want to be. And here. That's the hat. You see, I'm so glad we did the Sharpie lines. Because I can hardly see those Sharpie lines through this paint. And if they were not Sharpie lines, if they were something else, I probably wouldn't be able to see them. Now, if I do get this hook covered up a little bit, it's no big deal. I can always come back with some gray and some... Um, some gray and some white and whatever it is I need. Just bring it back. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. Okay, so now we went all the way around it. Right? I know. <laughs> okay, a little bit more black.
So still with a small brush, I want to cover this part. Oh, I forgot I wanted to use phthalo blue. Oh, well, next time. That's okay. So if you're using phthalo blue, you want to start with a whole lot of phthalo blue and a touch of black. Otherwise, black will overwhelm your phthalo blue and you won't see any difference. Okay. Okay, so back to my flat. Why? Da, da, da. Grab some black and just fill in the areas, fill in the background, all of it, whatever's left. There we go. Whoop. this around. I know I need more black. I have a whole lot of paint on this. I just picked up, well I didn't pick it up, I put it in the cart on Amazon. Um, it's a ceramic palette I guess. It has eight wells in it. And so I was wondering if I could use that and then the paint will like, I've, I've read reviews and people say that they can just put plastic wrap on it or serene wrap or something. And uh, then their paints stay fresh longer so that they're not wasting as much paint. They thought that that was a good idea because I, I've seen those that like paint saver things, like it's a box with a sponge in it and you know, all of that. I do not want to do that. There's a huge. And that eight well thing ceramic, it's seven inches square. So I'm thinking for my small desk, it really might work. We'll see. Okay. All right, so there was a blob of black paint. I don't like it. I'm just cleaning this up a little. Okay, let's let's experiment because we can, right? A la la, white gesso. It is gesso. It is white. Let's see. What should we add? Oh, well, we can probably just paint right directly on those trees and we'll see the result right away. Yeah. It is whiter, but it could be the same result if I just painted it white. Okay, let's do the comparing. Yeah, I mean, we can do this because we have, I mean, I can do this because I'm nuts. So this tree is gesso, coat of gesso. It does show a little bit better on the camera. I must tell you that. Okay, let's grab some white. This tree is the white that they have here. Hmm. 
Mm. I'm not sold. <laughs> no, that's not that. So I was thinking I have a wipe from Deco Art. Where is it? Okay, let's try this one. Just soft chic. <laughs> are you still with me, you guys? You're amazing. I'm playing here. You guys are amazing if you're still here with me. So this is Deco Art White. And I'm just going to paint this tree. Oh my gosh. Okay, well. <laughs> I do not see a lot of difference between the gesso and the white that I was using, but I do see a lot of difference between deco art and the other whites. Do you see this? Okay, I need to start selling deco art. <laughs> For this reason, right? <laughs> so this is deco art uh, cotton ball satin multi surface. I think that's what it is in this bottle. Because it could be, is I tend to move paints into smaller bottles. It could be this. Most likely, it's, oh yeah, it's Snow White. This is what it is. I'm sorry, you guys. I misled you. Any craft store. So, seems like that white works better. Right? Okay. So... So now you can paint a gnome, and I'm sure you could do that before, but I guess, I guess now you guys can design your own, because you can change the hat, right, do a different hat, do different kind of booties. Give him something to hold, like the, the fall one. He's holding um, a pumpkin. And really, if you really want this white, what you can do is you can sketch out your design and then outline it with the other color. Yeah, just paint the negative space instead of painting the whole thing. So, ta-da! Here we are. Here we are. I do not remember what we're painting next week. I could probably look this up super quick if you guys are still hanging with me. I am super grateful that you guys joined me to paint and uh, I didn't have to do this by myself. It is a lot of fun to have you guys join me. Let's see, what's next? So next is uh, Christmas challenge starts on December 1st. And then, oh, no, 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 no. We have the snow. Oh, Santa Owl. Yes, so Santa Owl is next. That is super cute. That is super adorable. So, okay. So here we are. Um, uh, check out my membership. Um, buymeacoffee.com. I should be saying this, like, you know, people still, like, this is kind of a thing. If you would like to buy me a coffee and support what I do, you can always go there and do that. I really appreciate it because it helps me pay for supplies. If you want to take it a step further, um, uh, I would love to invite you to the membership level two where we paint things that are a little bit more advanced and but i still take time right to explain everything uh where is that here so this is what's coming in the membership so you get new paintings once a month um and december is gonna get three paintings because i love you and i also really love painting snow and christmas and all of that but you get one painting. This was this month. 
And you also get access to everything in the library. So right now, I think there is 15 different uh, things that you can do with me. So yeah, I really appreciate you guys. And uh, I hope to see you again. You are super, super welcome. I just love, absolutely love seeing your names popping up. I'm like, oh, this person is back and this person is back. You make me super happy when you do that. Okay, so I will see you if you come back, <laughs> whenever you come back. So next Christmas challenge. Okay, bye.